And welcome to today's episode of Between Friends. It's so lovely to see your comments in here. Marjorie Hirschberger from Rainy Lancaster. It's good day to sew. I agree. And Diane Bass from Madison. I imagine it's a little chilly up there today. Um, uh, so please write in uh, the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. You know, folks love to know that, hey, maybe you're a neighbor of theirs and you're all watching the same thing. It's funny, you know, I have a neighbor right in my little cult, you know, street who I've lived on that street for 20 some years. And uh, I didn't learn till like three years ago that she sewed, really sewed. She's a huge Angela Wolf fan. She's a, a, uh, a member of the Wolf Pack. So you never know who is sharing your passion. They could be right next door to you. So we encourage you to sign in and see uh, if you know anybody. So, wow, there's a big crowd tonight. And no wonder, no wonder, it's because I have a great guest today. And that is Reen Wilcoxon from Embroidery Garden. Many of you know Reen. She's been designing in the hoop projects for, you know, 20 years. But I'll let her tell you all about it. So let's go ahead and welcome in Reen Wilcoxon. Hi, Hi. Reen. <laughs> nice to be here. Nice to see you. Lovely to have you here. Don't you kind of cringe when we say, oh, I've been doing this for 20 years? A little bit. It kind of dates me, I guess. <laughs> you know how old I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. But well, that's okay. It just means we're experienced. That's right. Right. Lots right. of experience. Yes. You know, I'm just going to answer this one question. It has nothing to do with our topic, but since we're right here. This is Doris. She has just bought a monster hoop for her Burnett. So first off, only Bernina sells the Burnett Snap Hoop Monsters. We co-branded them for Bernina. And so they are only available through Bernina. And their bottom is a little different than our standard monster hoop. Instead of the suede, they have what we call a hoop lifter. So nothing wrong with your hoop. It's just a different design so that it works um, on the Burnett. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. And uh, oh, wow, we have a Brene from Kirk from Ireland. Wow. wow. Thanks for joining us. Yes, thanks for joining us. I have no idea if I said that right, but I, I'm, I'm just guessing. I'm winging it there. Ms. Kirk, let's, let's go with that. And um, maybe you tell us what you're stitching over there in Ireland. We'd love to know. I am an Irish girl. I have uh, family over there. Been along. I mean, I have never been there, but I have lots of family who has. Yep. Uh, Dara says, thanks for answering. Now she knows. So that's good. And Kathy Lauderback down in Hope Sound, Florida. <gasps> Doesn't that sound sound nice? It's not Hope. It's Hobie Sound, I believe. Yeah. Doesn't that sound nice, Reen? Yes, it does. It's uh, kind of cloudy and gloomy here in Indiana. Yes, I know. You and I were saying it's a gloomy day in Indiana, right? Right. At least it could be worse. I mean, we could be buried under snow, but right. we haven't had too much snow this year. Oh boy. Well, it's still January, right? You know, right. there's a month or two left. Yeah. Real frankly, in Texas, we kind of, my husband said to me, are we going to get a winter? I mean, we had a really cold snap for about 10 days, but you know, it's been pretty mild. So anyway, he runs, he wants rain. So let's see, Sharon uh, Caprell, she says off topic, can I cut my four seasons mini quilt? fabric with my Cricut cutter. So she's talking about this panel. You know, we introduced this a couple weeks ago. And so there's cute. different seasons. Isn't that sweet? This is the winter. There's spring, summer, and fall. I wouldn't cut it with your Cricut uh, maker because you need to follow the instructions that are in the uh, PDF lesson that comes with it. Each season has its own lesson. And uh, if you cut the, oh, well, you could cut these pieces. Yes. Okay, don't cut the top arch or the side panel. 
of the snowman, but you most certainly can cut your patches because you, S you do have SVG files and FCM files in that download. So, sorry, you kind of caught me off guard. <laughs> it makes it so easy though, including the cutting files. Yeah, I know. It's so fun. Here's our friend over, I think her name is Dawn over at um, Creative Apple Case. Do you know her? Yes, I know Dawn. I got to meet her. Um, at the Houston Quilt Festival, we kind of met online and finally got to meet up there. Hey, that's great. That's great. Because you were only there for a minute. This was not your best quilt festival, that I know. Right. right? You know, unfortunately, I had to leave pretty quickly, but I was there. <laughs> yeah, you were there. Boy, that was a treacherous trip for you. So let's see, Ray Richardson, I, if you're asking me where in New Jersey, I was raised in Wildwood Crest, New Jersey. Um, you know, just a block from the Atlantic Ocean, beautiful place. And we have Donna from Australia joining us today. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I wonder what they're stitching down there, down under, right? Oh, oh, oh. oh well. Okay, we're here to talk. To, to, we're working, Reen. We're working. <laughs> <laughs> Such a hard day to work, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. We, you know, what a blessing though to be able to do this jointly together. I mean, you're in Indiana, you're in Indiana, here I am in Texas, and folks are all over and truly all over the world. That's really an amazing uh, way to connect. Oh, it is. I, I love it. It's just, um, you know, you can't get out and be everywhere. So, right. you know, it can be a lot of people just doing, you know, virtuals. Absolutely. Here we have Tina Campbell from New Zealand. Wow. Okay, so, you know, today we really wanted to talk about border designs because, you know, when we purchase a collection of border designs, we think that we're going to use them on a hemline, maybe as a frame around a pillow, or just, you know, in a vertical or horizontal fashion. But they really can do more, can't they? Oh, yeah. You can do a lot with borders. Um, we're going to show you some of the things that you can do, but, uh, you know, kind of think out of the box a little bit with them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, here's well, Ray's tell me she's a daughter in Cape May. So those of you who have maybe are not aware of Cape May, New Jersey, it's the most Southern tip of New Jersey. So it, it borders on the Atlantic ocean and the Delaware Bay, you know, New Jersey is shaped in that whatever, <laughs> however you want to describe that. But it is a Victorian town. It has the most beautiful painted ladies, as they say, those old Victorian homes, not unlike San Francisco. So if you ever get the opportunity to visit Cape May, it is stunning. It is just beautiful. It's a gem at the Jersey Shore. Most people think that New Jersey is like the opening scene of The Sopranos. You know that, Reem? <laughs> But, you know, it was called the Garden State. I mean, it is a beautiful state. So, anyway. I've never really been to the East Coast. You haven't? Oh, no. Well, we make it, that it would be great to go there and to the, you know, Northeast. Yes. Beautiful part of our country. And, you know, it, it's um, it's old, right? Philadelphia is and Boston. As you travel through those cities, you're just amazed at how old those buildings are. Now, we have friends um, that are, you know, watching from Europe. And, you know, when you go to Europe, it's really old there, right? You could be literally dining in a building that was... Uh, built in 1487 or something. So they may not be as impressed with the old architecture that we have in the Northeast as compared to Texas. Here in Texas, you know, they kind of just tear things down. So, <laughs> <laughs> but beautiful here also. Okay, so, you know, we're talking about border designs, but Reen, you have a brand new collection. That's really what we're so excited about, right? Yeah, I, I'm very, very excited about it. It's just, it's beautiful. It's it really beautiful. is. You did a great job on um, designing that, and it's unique. It is hand sketched floral borders, so it's light and airy, right? And, and it complements your first collection, which was hand sketched florals. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> you got the florals, and I got the border, so you know, it's so much more versatile. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so let's see. What city? Diamond Crystal wants to know where is uh, where is Dime? Dime's in Dallas, Texas. So that's North Texas. Okay, let's head over to PowerPoint. We're going to take a look at some of Reen's samples. 
um, here you can see, look at that. Well, first off, that beautiful, now that's a border design that fills that canvas there, which is a, uh, a wallet or a notebook, the, the larger canvas there. And it's just repeated over and over, right? Right, that's a great way to use borders. And then of course, just as a little embellishment on the wallet and in a vertical or horizontal fashion, as you can see there on the king ring, on, on the key ring chain. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, Liz Boswell says to you, Reen, you have a quilt halo. Oh, yeah, I kind of do. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. That's cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at um, some of the samples that you made. So tell us a little bit about this one, Reen. So I made a pillow, um, you know, use the corners and the border pieces, just kind of frame out a little pillow that I flange, you know, the edges on. And then I popped in a monogram from the software. And, you know, it's a quick gift. It's one of those gifts that you could, you know, put it on your machine, you know, let it stitch. Yeah, you got to change the thread, what, two times here in this design. But, you know, quick, easy gift. Right. Not much. It doesn't take much. It really, because they're fast. So, um, Dari, Barbara wanted to know what fabrics were used on that pillow. Is that like a linen or a cotton? What did yeah, you the um, pillow is um, a linen. It's kind of loose, loosely woven, um, but it was so easy to do. You know, of course, the back is an envelope style. Very easy kind of pillow to make. Yeah. Okay, and so the R, one of our friends here wants to know, Risa, oh, my good friend, Risa Branke, I'm sure you met her too at Quilt, right? I believe I did. And the R, perfect for her. <laughs> perfect for her. So that's in our Word Art and Stitches. That's a, one of the fonts that is in there. Um, you kind of mentioned the name. Well, I think it is uh, uh, Ashberry. What, what did you say? I'm sorry. Ashberry. It comes in a lace. It comes in a grid. And I think a... A satin or maybe a run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Very for variegated pretty. threads, like for different looks, we offered it in different, uh, you know, finishes so that it would showcase different types of threads better. Right. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so let's see. Oh, and then we have another sample over here. I love this one. Yeah, no, that's a coaster. And... It's made out of basswood, so I actually embroidered on wood. You did that uh -huh. live, Eileen, where you showed how to embroider on wood. And, you know, it's like these designs are perfect because they are so light and airy. Right. They really are. This is exactly what you're talking about. I still have that sample right here. And this is wood. I mean, you know, we keep it here so when we say knock on wood, we actually have some wood to knock on, right? But so, it is a thin wood. I mean, you know, we're not yeah. embroidering on, you know, plywood or something. It, it is a thin wood. So it's perfect for this. And, you know, the back of that coaster, I just put felt on it to finish it off. And, you know, the little border going around, um, you know, attach the felt to the back side. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Dory also wants to know, how about that first sample that we showed, the wallet and the key strap? So were they um, faux suede or what would they be? I think the wallet was probably cotton and then the key fob and the little wallet. I think they were um, full leathers. Yeah. Like a marine vinyl, you know, so yes, a, a type of uh, product like that. Yeah. So Julian wants to know uh, what font is this? So all these fonts that you're showing are in word art. And, right. and so that's Dimes uh, software. And we can take a look at that um, in, a, in a moment or two. We're going to. Yeah, I can't actually that. remember the name of that one, but um, it's very pretty. Very, very pretty. I believe it, be, it might be called Brighton. I could be wrong about that, oh, but it yeah. might be. I think it is Brighton, which is beautiful. And Dari says, is there a pattern project tutorial on these items? Not really. We're just kind of showcasing, you know, inspiring samples and hoping to motivate you to, you know, decorate blanks that you have at home or just fabric, right? Right. You know, I might do some few little tutorials on, you know, some of the projects, but they're very easy. They really, really are. Um, I know people hate when you say something is easy and, you know, they don't understand how to do it. But these projects that I've done are pretty easy. Yeah, they really are. It's great. It's just, you know. OK, so lots of wood questions. Terry Freeman wants to know how thick is that wood? Well, <laughs> 
you know, here, let me tell you a secret. Shall we tell them the secret, Reem? After we do a show, so we did this show. I did this show, oh, I don't know, a month or so, two months ago. I just forget everything afterwards. <laughs> right? <laughs> but it's it's like maybe an eighth of an inch. I th it's very narrow. And it's basswood. It's not balsa. It's bass. And the reason is it is a little bit sturdier than balsa. Balsa has a tendency to chip, I think, if I remember my research correctly. But you could go to the blog um, and and search embroidering on wood. Yeah, here it's somebody in our uh, one of our team members just put that up, the link to how to embroider on wood. So all the information on how to do that, you, you would find right there. And right. Cheryl, it's pretty easy to do, you know, don't, don't be scared. You know, yeah. your machine is going to make a little bit of a pop noise because it's going through the wood. But, you know, the wood right. is so thin that um, it's going to be fine. Yeah. It's loud, right? It is loud. And so, um, but someone says, can you get sawdust in your machine? So what I did was I fused a piece of interfacing. This is our Fuse So Soft, which is a Trico knit interfacing. And I fused that on the back of the wood before I embroidered. And that really helped keep the sawdust, you know, in the wood instead of down into the um, the bobbin case. And then, of course, after you ever after you stitch on wood, clean your bobbin case, right? You know, take mm -hmm. a pipe cleaner. That's what I use. I use a pipe cleaner. I put a drop of oil on the pipe cleaner, and I just wipe out the inside of that bobbin case. You know that the uh, bobbin case sets into and then you know it doesn't really works. produce a lot of you know lint or dust or anything and on my coaster i also iron the um interfacing onto the back side before i started good yeah it really makes a big difference i think so so where do you buy it well you know online right online yeah <laughs> it's very easy to find it's very easy to find just you know, Google it. Okay, now this I love. This is one of your in the hoop projects. Well, they're all in the hoop, but tell us a little bit about this one. So it is one of my in the hoop bags. Um, on this one, I use foam as, you know, in place of the batting. And I'll show you that a little bit closer up in a minute. But um, I just wanted to use one of the little corners. You know, I could have added a monogram on this too, but I decided just to use the little corner. Mm -hmm. And then I took um, one of the parts of the uh, file, the corresponding file, and just kind of hook them together there at the top to, you know, add a little bit up there at the top. Very nice, really nice. Yeah, just that delicate little line, that vine uh, traveling across uh, above the zipper, you know, it just makes it a little, just kind of uplifting, right? Just a little bit more. And on that one, I used um, metallic thread. Oh, there is some metallic. It's hard to see in that photo, but there is metallic thread on there. Very nice. And so, um, and I just have to show this because our friend Risa Ranke says, once again, no puckers embroidering on wood. <laughs> That's true. So if you're a beginner and you're worried about puckers, just stitch on wood, right? <laughs> How do you hoop the wood? Well, that's what Snap Hoop Monster is all about, right? Flat hoops. You can only do it on a flat hoop for sure. And we're gonna, I'm going to be showing you sticky hoop in a little while. So that's also a great alternative. If you don't want to use the snap hoop monster, you could use the sticky hoop, but you need a flat hoop. That's right. You just won't be able to get it down close enough to the machine bed, right? Right. You know, <clears throat> the uh, snap hoop monster is perfect for, you know, embroidering on that type of um, product. Okay, so now a lot of folks are saying, love doing bags, love doing your bags. And um, and then Penny Rex says, love the color. What do you mean by foam? Well, we're gonna show you the foam, but the foam that you're referring to, Reen, right, is so any shape foam. And that's a, um, a light foam that is used to line bags and add structure to, it, all kinds of bags. Like if you're familiar with the Vera Bradley brand of finished bags, that's how they get structure in their bags. They have an interfacing. Um, it's really an inner lining because uh, it's between the outside fabric and in the outer fabric and the lining. So but we will show that to you. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Oh, this is lovely. 
So, you know, again, I use the, um, the corners and some of the borders and, you know, just made like a little hanging. This one is actually, it's 12 by 12. Um, I, again, the font comes out of the software and I, you know, just type it in and yeah. there it is and pop it right in the center of the, um, you know, the little frame and right. stitch it out. And then I just stitch borders onto it. It's beautiful. I mean, it really decorates a table, really, you know, adds a cozy touch to your home. And what, how long did that take to make? Under an hour for sure, right? Oh, it didn't take long, you know, because the stitching on all these designs goes very quickly, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, that didn't take me that long to do. Probably took a longer to do that stipple I put behind it. And then I kind of, after I did that, I thought, eh, maybe I should have put that stipple on there, but. Oh, I like know. it. It adds <laughs> yeah, it adds texture. Okay, so Ginger Frazier wants to know where do you get your zippers, Rain? This would be going back to your in the hoop bag. I use a lot of zippers from um, Sally Tomato. I like yes. the zipper by the yard because it's there's no waste really, you know, and you right. don't have to go out and buy a whole bunch of different sizes and lengths of a color. It's all right there, and I think they're three yard pieces. Yes, they are for your, and they come with like eight pulls, I believe, right? Yeah, you get the pulls and, yeah. um, you know, they're perfect. Perfect and for them. They are, they look like they are shiny metal, like, you know, afraid to stitch on it, but they are nylon and they, they're so easy to slide. You can stitch right over them without any damage to your needle. They're lovely. They're just lovely. And they come in number threes and number fives. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's the difference? Do you know? Uh, it's the size of the zipper tape and the teeth. Right. So, you know, if you are like new to, you know, bag making, go with the larger size. It's just a little bit more forgiving. Okay. So I just have to let Anna Sidwell have the last word on wood. And that is, but wood is hard to wear. <laughs> Okay, no more wood. <laughs> that was fun, though. I think we had more fun <laughs> talking about wood this week than we did the week that we actually did it. Hey, we have a friend, Sigrid, from Germany type uh, popping in. Welcome. Nice, lovely to have you here. Lovely to have you here. Okay, so what is next? Oh, this is fun. Tell us about this. So, you know, I'm trying to think out of the box with using borders, and each one of those let's call it arms, is one of the little border pieces from the set. And I just brought one in. And um, in the Giant software, there's a feature called Carousel. And it just automatically places them around. I chose an odd number. I thought nine, you know, would be good. And I think it looks like a little snowflake. Yeah, I do too. It's adorable. So, hey, should we go into the software and take a look at how we do that, maybe, um, let me see all my dirty laundry here. Just hang on, bear with me for a minute while I switch screens and get us into software. So, okay, now we can pop that back up. All right, and uh, remove that for a minute. Okay, so if you own, or if you purchase Reen's newest collection, and you have embroidery tool shed or you have perfect embroidery pro or you have patch and applique maker you're going to find those designs already preloaded into your computer when you install it and if you don't you know uh, you'll just find it on your hard drive as you normally would any other design but i'm going to pop into our patch and applique maker on the design menu and right here we have designer collections and embroidery garden is one of the first choices the collection that you see here is her original collection from last summer in july this was uh, the first collection that she did with this style and it's really interesting Reen, because it's raw edge applique and it's that hand sketched look you know like pencil sketching right it's just, uh, it's just beautiful. And I've got a sample, you know, I can show in a little bit of combining the floral set with the border set. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they match perfectly. Yeah, they really do. It's just lovely. And, of course, you're seeing solid colors here. There's 
pink and yellow and blue, and that is applique fabric. So if we were to remove that, you know, it would just be outlines. But let's go ahead and back into that menu and look at her latest collection, which is the floral borders. Now they complement that original collection. You don't have to have both, but if you have the first one, you most certainly might want the second one. And you'll find you're going to have a vertical border and then you'll have an entire unit pieced together. So, oh, well, we didn't want to do that. So let, let me just get a new screen, forgive me. And we'll open this one. And so we've kind of done the work for you. We have already created this in a large layout. So this would be a really large hoop, 10 and a half by 10 and a half. But you're going to have your corner designs and your vertical borders. But if you have a smaller hoop, then no problem because you can build your own layout by bringing in each individual border and then the corner if that's how you want to proceed right if that's how you want to create this uh layout so now these two designs together they only measure that's like a six inch square or close to it right so lots of hoops can do that and if right. you're only in a five by seven well then just do it by repeating um, each individual element in a separate hooping. Not that hard to do, right, Reed? That's right. You know, you can you can accomplish um, you know whatever you want with any size hoop. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so uh, now you might notice there's this other folder, and that's parts. But before we go look at it, let's just look at all of the designs that come in here. I mean, there is 75 here, and then when you go into parts you're going to find each small element, like each leaf and each flower and each little swirl and vine so that you can really create your own layout. Because isn't that really what we wanna do? We all wanna make it our own, put our own style on it. You know, using Green's inspiration, using her original collection, but doing it for your style. Like that's what I did with this shirt that I'm wearing. I took her embroidery designs and instead of making it like a frame, I filled this bodice with a repeat of, you know, one of the borders. And I think it's really attractive to decorate a neckline like that. So- Looks great, I mean, Eileen. And even these little pieces, um, you can take them, put them on a collar point, um, you know, put them on cuffs, you know, yeah. make a little, you know, pattern and embroider a cuff of a shirt. Right. Let's go ahead and take um, this little leaf and I'm going to remove this previous design. And I'm going to, with it selected, now I am in Perfect Embroidery Pro and I'm going to go up to um, the carousel but I'm going to select scatter. And when I do that, I can now just toss these pretty leaves across the, uh, the hoop, the sewing field, and I can control the size. So if I have a giant hoop, I could make that 10 by 10. And every time I hit apply, it will change. So once you love it, click OK, because you won't be able to go back to it. You'll have to continue to scroll and view. But what if you have a small hoop? What if you have a a five by seven. Well, then you will enter those numbers into the box. And now you'll see that it has sized the embroidery designs so that they fit that hoop and they're scattering it throughout that hoop. So, and again, we can hit apply and apply and apply and, until we're happy. And then there you have it. And it's just a really pretty way to fill a canvas. Isn't that fun, Green? It is, it's just, uh... It's just so much fun to do because everything is just different and you just pick what you want to pick, you know? So yeah, it really you could use that on so many different things too. Just a pattern like that, a random pattern. Yeah. So we also talked about, um, well, you showed your, um, your snowflake. So let's go ahead and, well, I have an idea of, um, okay. You know, I hate it when I watch people do this and here I am doing it. Which one do I want? Okay, so I'll just select this one. And now with it selected, I'll go into the carousel. And now I can make a circle of them. And, you know, maybe I want them closer together. Uh, that seems pretty good. And we'll click OK and apply. 
And now I could put some words in the center, but maybe I want to make a, uh, a decoration for the edge of a tablecloth, right? To run across the edge of the tablecloth. So I'm going to ungroup this and then remove those bottom ones. And then I'll take this and I'm going to group it again just so it all stays together and behaves. And then I'll go to the border repeat tool and uh, we'll just put a one and apply, and we can put oh, six, apply, there you have it. How fun is that? That's amazing. I know, now that's big, that is 55 inches, but at least you can see it. It doesn't mean you're gonna stitch it like that, right? Who is a hoop that's 55 inches? But at least you could see it, like if you know your table is 60 inches wide, or in length, and you, that's the border that you're going to need. This helps you determine how many repeats you will have to uh, stitch in order to fill that space. Right? Okay. Let's, let's see where we are here. Do we have any questions? Um, wow, there's a lot of questions. Uh, and Sharon Crean, she says she loves that feature in the software. She's used it before. I love to hear that. It is really fun, right? Yep. And what software are we using? So right now I'm in the Dime software and, you know, we have uh, an umbrella of software. So the, all of our software lives in Embroidery Toolshed and Embroidery Toolshed is our free software. So anybody can download that and that will allow you to copy, paste uh, and mirror image designs. You could create manually make something like this, but you would be doing it um, manually. Then if you have our other software, like our full digitizing software, that's perfect embroidery pro. That's what I'm playing in right now. But, you know, we also have patch and applique maker, and that's where you also have a lot of editing ability. So whatever software you have, um, learn to use it. It's so fun. And my goodness, there's so much that you can um do with it for sure okay so what else are we going to show reen well i've got you know a few samples here that uh i can show if you're ready oh you bet let's do that all right so this is just a close-up of that pillow very very pretty love that design um next i did a towel this is just like a linen towel that i made and this um, coordinating design here is from the first set. This is the uh, floral collection set. You can see the raw edge applique. Oh, it's beautiful. Hold it up a little bit higher for you. And then, you know, basically I kind of took the matching uh, border from the new set and kind of put it end to end and just stitched it across the bottom of the towel. That looks lovely. And here's something too. On this... You can see my stabilizer there. I did use Dimes Tear and Wash. It'll, you know, wash out after, you know, a couple of washings there. On this, I didn't use any stabilizer. I used like the Sullivan spray to, um, oh. uh, you know, stiffen mm -hmm. this fabric. Wow. And since these designs are so light and airy on that section, I didn't use any stabilizer. So there wasn't anything to pick out. You know, everyone's always concerned about the backside and stuff. But, you know, I think that looks great. Here yeah, is the close up of the coaster. And, you know, again, I just added a piece of felt to the back side. Uh, the bag, you know, we talked about the foam. And, you know, let me show you. I'm just holding the bag by, you know, the bottom corner here. You notice that the foam is giving it a lot of structure. If I didn't have it in there, it would just sort of kind of flop over. But that's why I like using the So Any Shape Foam because of just the structure that it adds to, um, you know, small bags even. Here's the snowflake. I kind of did two samples of the snowflake. And just like Eileen just showed, I took the um, one of the borders, went into the carousel feature, and just placed them around, played, you know, with the buttons, clicked a couple of times. And this I stitched out in the variegated thread. I thought that kind of looked wintry and gave it a nice kind of look. And, you know, this is another one that I did. These kind of end up, I made them like six by six. 
I think if I stitched a few more together and, um, you know, stitch them together, make a little quilt, you know, a little table runner or something, that would be cute. And then something I was just sort of playing around with the other day. So what I did was I took one of the corner designs and I enlarged it. And, you know, remember, if you have dimes free, tool shed, embroidery tool shed software, and when you get these designs, you get the C2S file, which is the native file, which is important because when you open it up in embroidery tool shed, you can enlarge the designs perfectly. That means they enlarge, it regenerates the stitches so that this is gonna stitch out perfectly. Let me hold it up a little bit higher for you. So what I did was I brought a design in that I liked, one of the borders. Um, I applied an outline to it, like just put a square around it. And then I applied like um, a nap blocker type design. I stitched this using the foam. This is you know a piece of foam on the back, the sew any shape foam. But what it did, if I can kind of show you this, look how it gave it the design like an embossed look, trapunto maybe, you know, like a fake trapunto look. I thought that was pretty cool. That's beautiful, Green. But it was just, you know, something to play around with. And, you know, you got to play with your software so you can see the things you can do. It's adorable. I'm going to show you how to do that Trapunto look um, in just a second, but we do have some questions. Uh, Monica wants to know, are the designs soft enough to make into a quilt for using as a, as a, well, she says laptop, but I think she means lap quilt. So yes, definitely. Right. Oh, they can be stitched on anything because they are so light and airy. Yes, um, they're so fluid. Mm -hmm. uh, they stitch beautifully on everything, cottons, um, uh, you know, thicker things like full yeah. leather, um, right. this is a lean shirt. Yeah, this is like a tissue knit, which frankly is too thin for a woman of my age. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, so, and, and I use the sew and wash, when I use uh, adhesive sew and wash, so it's gone. And look how nice it looks. It just looks lovely. So yeah, it does a really nice job. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Oh, somebody wanted to know, um, are those embroidery designs included in Patch and Applique Maker software? And they are not, they're a separate person, uh, purchase, right? And um, so let's see, Let how about, uh, the reason wants us to know, what spray did you, were you talking about? So we like the Sullivan's Fabric Stiffener, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just spray it on. I like to iron it. I might even spray it a couple of times just yep. to make that fabric, you know, it's not stiff, stiff, but it gives yeah. it enough body for these right. light designs to just stitch perfectly on without using a stabilizer. And I did use my... Um, uh, snap hoop monster right and when i taught this a couple weeks ago that's how i treated my fabrics that i cut on my digital cutter i spray them first and then they don't shred on that adhesive mat they just you know they're they're cut perfectly and then i just lift them right off without any of the fibers staying on the mat which i hate don't you hate that <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But oh, well, that, that's another topic. Okay, so let's pop over into the software and I'm going to show you how Rain did that Trapunto. So here's her embroidery design. And the first, now I am in Perfect Embroidery Pro. This is our full digitizing software. So the first thing I'm going to do is select it and then right click, go Utility, Create Outline. And the default setting is 0 0.08. That's fine. So I'll keep that in place. And then I'll go to the art tool and select rectangle. And I'm just going to select a uh, uh, left mouse click and drag the cursor to create a rectangle. And then I'll select both that rectangle and the outline only. And I will combine them, not group, but combine. So that's making them one art artwork, one piece of artwork. And then I'm going to right click, convert to, complex fill and this might take a moment because this is generating an awful lot of stitches and i had previously selected the option of echo quilting and uh, my stitch density is one point uh, apart so that tells us how many 
how much space is in between each echo line of echo stitching and then that's my stitch length i could shorten that i usually for quilting like that to be about 2.4 um and then that's it i click apply and i am done so in just a couple quicks uh, clicks i was able to mimic exactly what reen accomplished with her um beautiful piece of work I, it's just lovely and i guess they want to see the foam so this is the sew any shape foam those of you who aren't familiar with foam. So this is often in between handbags, uh, any kind of soft structure, ready wear uh, accessory that you've purchased. This is what's inside. It has a foam inner lining and two very delicate pieces of fabric, top and bottom that are fused in place. This is not a fusible product, okay? It's just going to sit on top of your fabric and because it has that little nylon fabric on top, it hugs your fabric very nicely. So you really don't get shifting when you're quilting it. So we love that. I have a, a, a placemat here that I'll bring under the camera, but you can see how, you know, all look at all that dimension you get when you use foam instead of batting. And you know what I really love about it? Look, you can ball this up, right? Stash this in the back of the closet. Oh, company coming. There you go. You're in shape. Yes, you can press it out, but really it just bounces back to shape, which is awesome, right, Reen? Right. You know, and don't be afraid to use it like in the hoop on bags. Yeah. This bag is like eight by eight, and you know, it's stitched beautifully, it's stitched easily. You know, you can stitch through this foam without any problem. And I personally like the fact that it's not fusible. Yeah, so it is, um, we call it machine embroidery friendly. You know, we sourced this and because I was looking for one that was just a little bit different than what's currently out there available in the market. You know, I, we didn't invent this product, right? But I wanted one that was just a little bit more hoop friendly because the others have a little bit more dimension and yeah, it's not, you know, can be a problem for uh, hooping. Okay, so let's see, Colleen Silva has a question. They are wondering, is Sullivan's better for stiffening than best pressed? Sullivan's will give you a stiffer hand than best press, right, Green? That's what I found when I was, um, you know, playing around with some of the stuff that uh, Sullivan's does give you a little bit, uh, uh, stiffer feel, you know, and so that was great for that little towel that I did. Right. You know, it depends on your uses, right? Best Press is wonderful, has lovely aroma. And, um, you know, I, I like it on clothing, you know, I like it for all kinds of things. But, you know, for hard working uh, fabrics that I'm going to, you know, put through the ringer in a hoop, I like the Sullivan's. It's going to stand up to what I'm going to put it through a little bit better. Mm -hmm. I see someone asking about the needle for the foam. I just use my regular 7511 when I made my bag. Yeah, I just match whatever fabric I'm using. You know, that's that's all I worry about. Mm -hmm. Nothing special. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see. Well, that wasn't that fun about the Trapunto. Well, let's talk about how about if we talk about my t-shirt first? I thought we would just go to the overhead and I'll show you how um I did that. Not I'm not gonna stitch it, but I have another t-shirt, so. First thing that I do is I print a template of the embroidery design, right? And I like to do that on our print and stick target template paper. So this is tacky and it's also translucent. I love that. And in our software, now in Perfect, uh, uh, in Embroidery Toolshed, which is our free software program, you can print a template of any embroidery design. It will be an actual size. And that's going to tell you if it's going to work on your garment or not, right? And then I have my t-shirt. And so I have folded it in half, matching the centers. And I've pl I'm just going to dress my totally tubular hooping station here just for a moment so that I can show you how I worked the template. I like to get the shirt flat on a surface like the hooping station. And I've marked my center with a pin. And then I take my template and I center this horizontal, this vertical line with that pin. That's what's really key. And then I keep an eye on the top of the embroidery designs. And I want to make sure that they're not going to stitch on the ribbing. 
And if I'm not square, you know, I can reposition this. You know, I can do this. <laughs> and if you're in my sewing room, you know that you will witness me doing this several times till I get it exactly where I want it. And then um, I'm happy and I'm good to go, okay? So now I know where it has to go on the shirt, but now the challenge is to get it in the hoop, right? So for that, I'm going to use a sticky hoop. And I have a sew and wash. I think I'm gonna flip this around this way. Um, it's a little crooked, but that's all right. And uh, now this embroidery design is not going to fill this eight by eight hoop, but if it did, what I would concentrate on doing is making sure that the, uh, the beam of perfect alignment laser was hitting the center marks on my hoop. And then I would know that I'm going to be absolutely square. And then I'm gonna just dress that board right over top of the hoop. And I'm going to align that template with the beam. And just smooth that in place. Now this is where you really have to be careful. You want one layer, one smooth layer of fabric on that stabilizer. We don't want any puckers. We don't want anything you know, pleated or double layered underneath our template. So I'm really feeling that and smoothing it and making sure it's nice and smooth. And it is. And then now we take the time to nest it above the um, hoop because I'm not going to use a multi-needle multi machine or a tubular machine. I'm going to use my standard embroidery uh, machine, you know, single needle. And so I'm just sliding this off and then I'm going to take the time to pull those sleeves out, wrong side out, because they have a tendency to get caught underneath the hoop. And the flatter I can make everything, the better. So I'm just, you know, sneaking my hand in here and pulling that sleeve right side out. I mean, wrong side out. Okay. And then I'm gonna pull that back up over top it's a little clunky right we've all done this it's definitely clunky until we get it nice and flat and opened up and then we have our design area right here i'm going to turn off that pal so you get a better look and here we have it now that's large enough to go to my machine and make sure that everything will fit nice and flat on the machine bed. I'll transport it with the board that comes with sticky hoop or my monster hoop, right? I'm gonna slide that underneath my hoop and transport it over to the machine. To get past the needle, I have to do this. I have to flatten everything out and let it get past the needle attached and then open up the design area, confirm that the embroidery design is in the right orientation. So I'm going to flip this around for you so you can see where that attachment is, right? So if you're sitting at the machine, this shirt is upside down. No problem. At the, at the machine editing feature, I'm just going to rotate that design 180 degrees so that the curved portion is going to hit the neckline. And that's all I have to do. And of course, I'll center my needle right over that template. And the last thing I do, remove the template. And if you don't remove it, you'll stitch through it and then you'll have to get your seam ripper and, you know, you'll survive, but it's not a happy moment. <laughs> right, Reed? That's right. <laughs> happens to all of us. Happens to all of us. Uh, I see lots of questions coming through. Yeah. Diane Bass, is the foam thinner than soft and stable? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And Phil Back did her first t-shirt and there was no puckering. Do you think yeah. it was made out of wood? <laughs> of course not. good for you and congratulations good for you um let's see what else do we have where do we get the free software so we'll be putting that free software up on a link in uh, in the comments so just hang out with us if, but it's free on our website uh let's see what's the difference between pal 2 and pal 3 well pal 2 and pal 3 there's really very little difference. It's just a, 
a different design. So it is a gooseneck instead of like an alligator clamp. The PAL-2 was a wrought iron alligator clamp. I don't have a PAL-2 in here anymore. But uh, the new PAL-3 is just a longer gooseneck. It's just kind of easier to maneuver. It takes up less space, but that's all. If you already have PAL-2, you probably don't need PAL-3. Yeah, let's see. How do you keep the extra fabric out of the way while you run the machine? Well, number one, you stay with the machine. Right, Rain? That's right. Yeah. That's what always happens when you turn your back. Absolutely. And just, you know, you can be 28 minutes into a 30-minute design, and if you turn your back, that's when it happens. So, you know, you can uh, use painter's tape to kind of, like, nest it, and, you know, tape it into a grid. But, frankly, I sit with it. The problem is going to, you know, the problem is going to continue occur when the needle is uh, traveling close to the outside edge of the design. So if you have software, which I encourage all of you to, to use, at least have free software. And what I always do with an embroidery design is uh, view the stitch simulator so I can see the process. I'll know, oh, it's going to stitch the outside area first, or oh, it's going to start in the middle and advance to the right or to the left. So if you know that in advance, it's not a surprise, right? And that's the beauty of software. There's no surprises because, you know, once a surprise happens in the hoop, you know, it's you and your stitch ripper working your way out of it, right? Right. Keep a chopstick handy. So if you have to, you know, move some fabric, you know, out of the way, you can easily do it. Right. Yeah. Lauren Oak, she says, never, uh, never turn your back. Creative application uses slap wrist bracelets to hold the fabric. That would work. This is a skinny little t-shirt. So I don't know that, it, you know, but anything is worth a try, right? Anything is worth a try for sure. Okay, let's see. Uh, Lauren Oak said that her machine knows if she goes to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> and let's see. Oh, claw type hair clips. That would definitely work well. You got to be careful, you know, that the, they don't get caught on the foot. You know, there's, there's all kinds of stuff happening around the foot, right? Especially behind the foot, right, Reen? Right. You know, just, you know, do what works for you, but just be careful and stay with your machine. And whatever you do to keep the sewing field open, Make sure whatever device you are using is also going to stay out of the sewing field, right? You don't want to create a greater problem. Right. And you got to be careful, do. too, when the hoop moves around. And as it, you know, goes underneath that part of the machine where the, you know, the needle's down here. And then, you know, you got that little, I don't know what you call it, but sometimes things can get caught on there. You yeah. know, that pressure foot lever and stuff. Yes. You know, there's all kinds of things underneath there that something That's can get caught on. Right. Absolutely. When you least expect, expect it. So Nancy Taylor says she slows down the machine. Some of just mentioned good. hoop yards, which you can use, but I don't think with a sticky hoop, but yeah. if you use another hoop, you certainly can. Right. So you can use hoop guards when you are hooping a t-shirt, but we're not really hooping this t-shirt. This is sitting on top of the hoop. So that's a different application, but you're right. Um, they, they are handy for quite a few things. Let's see. Okay, um, then I also wanted to show you um, how to do continuous embroidery, right? Because lots of orders are, you know, on and on and on and on, right? So uh, why don't we start in software? Let me find that design that I was working on. Um, that's not it. Oh my goodness, don't show it yet. All right, bear with me. It's coming. Just wait for it. You'll be so excited when you see it. I mean, a lot of times you do want to put a border like on a pillowcase or something. And, you know, you want to make sure they line up correctly. Yep. Gosh. Here we go. Okay. Okay, so... Let's take a look at these designs. So both of these designs are from Reeves Hand Sketched Floral Borders. Design A actually connects end to end. So let me zoom in so you can get a better look on that, right? So here's the first repeat and the second repeat. And they just go together so well, right? If I just, you know, am able to hoop so that they connect like that, perfect. 
But design B is also end to end. See, that's the end of B. And this is the beginning of B. So they are truly end to end. But that's not a very pleasing look, in my opinion. I would prefer if they connect in this fashion, where it seems like it's a continuous border that never stopped. And I want you to think that I have a hoop that is 18, 25 inches long, right? And when I stitch it, as in D, if it's all the same color, then really it tricks the eye. You can't see where one ends and the second one starts. So it can be a little challenging to nail that in uh, placement, but in software, in our Perfect Embroidery Pro, we have a, um, a unique uh, feature, which is, let me copy that and put up a new screen and paste that. We have a uh, feature that are placement marks. So I'm going to add them to the design. And you'll notice I'm putting uh, three at the left end and three at the right end. And they're gonna place them right where, right where we want, right at the absolute end. So then if I, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna recolor these, right? I'm going to select those three and I'm gonna make them red just so that we know which ones are which. And then I'm gonna select everything, do copy, paste, and put them end to end. I still have my problem, don't I? Look, that's not very desirable. So what I'll do is I will select my second repeat and the um, placement guides, and I'm gonna move them, everything, so that it now connects where I want it to connect. And I am focusing right here on this connection. I want this green stem to connect to this green stem that was previously stitched. And it is wise to make sure that they align this way. Okay, so now that I have that in place, it gets a little confusing, but just bear with me. I'm going to take my placement marks and I'm going to move them here. And then I'll renew, no, let's see. I'm going to remove these. I'm actually going to remove these, these second ones, remove them. And now this set of embroidery, <laughs> one thing that's helpful is to lock some of these designs so we don't gather all of them. So now when I select, oh goodness, bear with me. <laughs> Now, when I select this, isn't that frustrating? Okay, let's see what one this is. So let's lock that. And that's not what we wanted to do. Oh goodness, I knew I should have made a video of this. <laughs> All right, let's back out. You know what's beautiful about software? No matter what you can do, you can undo it. So what I wanna do is take these placement marks and uh, move them so that they are connecting. Oh gosh, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm losing myself here. And so I don't wanna embarrass myself anymore. But basically this is what you're doing. You're going to move those placement marks so that they are marking the connection point of the second design. And when we do that, and we copy and we paste, then when we connect, everything goes together absolutely seamlessly. Especially when you paste it. There we go. Okay, now you'll see. And I stitched it so I can prove it. Thank goodness. <laughs> hey, come in here and tell me out. <laughs> Monica says, uh, your mistakes help us see how to fix stuff. You know, well, earlier before we were, um, before we went live, I said, Reem, you know, you're going to laugh at me when I'm demoing software. 
because you know we always say here if it's uh, an extensive demo make a video well it's harder to do it live absolutely. but i'm sure you have uh, some videos on this on youtube and plus in the software you can absolutely. there's yes. built-in videos yeah okay so let's go to the overhead cam and i'll show you what i mean all righty oh my goodness gracious Okay, so I have my first design stitched, right? Here's my very first design. And I added, you know, I stitched my placement marks. That's the last color of the embroidery design. The first color that's going to stitch is the placement marks that would go down here. We don't need to stitch them on the first repeat. Then we stitch our design. And then we stitch the second group of placement marks. And then... We bring up our embroidery design and on sticky stabilizer and in sticky hoop, we stitch our placement guides. So these are the first color of the second design. And then I just take my uh, fabric and I align that beam with the stitched line. And when I do that, it will stitch out perfectly as planned and here i'll show you here's my template and as you can see that's going to connect exactly where i want it and create a continuous flowing vine <laughs> the whole key is to have pal aligned with the placement marks the vertical with that vertical center and then the horizontal and then you just place that stitch mark Placement guides underneath the beam, and you are, you know, smooth the fabric to the sticky stabilizer, and then you don't even need the template. But I figured I would show you this so that you could have know and have the confidence in how that's going to stitch out and it's going to be just perfect. So awesome, right? That is awesome. It looks great. And the thing is, you can make it as long as you need it to be. Yeah, over and over and over again. Yeah, absolutely. I know. I, I love it. it. It is, and it's flawless. It, it, you know, we have fancy machines, don't we, Reen? Yes, we do. Yeah, with lots of things, cameras, scanners, lasers, whistles, bells, all kinds of stuff. But that is absolutely flawless, that technique I just showed you, and dependable every single time. Every single time. Yeah. Used it on wedding dresses magazine cover garments boy that you know wouldn't be here without it for sure yeah all right so many fun uh techniques today please explain sticky hoop is this a permanent hoop with sticky stabilizer it is so let's take a look at sticky hoop so sticky hoop comes with you know the attachment just like our monster hoop right and the flat metal bottom it also comes with 25 sheets of pre-cut tear away adhesive stabilizer, a cut to fit your hoop. This, you know, comes with it. And um, you just uh, uh, add the sticky stabilizer to the back of the hoop and you are ready to stitch. Now this is how you stitch on wood. Absolutely. You, you can use a monster hoop or you can just do this and it'll stick to that. And that's the way to stitch. So lots of reasons to use a sticky hoop it's also great for finished items like um a cosmetic case or a jewelry bag that has a zip top opening let me pull one out of here and see if i have that or ribbon it's really handy for ribbon um i've shown sticky hoop for uh lots of beautiful ribbon that we've done over time like savannah you know it, it can be difficult to hoop ribbon right so you can use pal to make sure that you're uh, aligned vertically in the hoop you can even do multiple uh lengths of ribbon so if you have two rolls of ribbon or you're doing a giant bow with a name on one side and maybe a date on the other end then you could just put the other end of the ribbon in the same hooping and stitch both it's also great for um like a lovey, you know, this, these things are difficult to hoop because, you know, the design area is rather close to uh, the border. Well, there we go. And we just stick that down, stitch that and adorable. It's so cute for sure. Mm -hmm. So they're different than the, 
They're different than our monster hoops because they don't come with a top. Mm -hmm. They do not have the protective suede. They've been designed to only use sticky stabilizer and they are really um, quite handy. And Carol Martincheck wants to know, what's the contraption with the beam? Well, that contraption is Perfect Alignment Laser 3. And Perfect Alignment Laser is a crosshair. It's a laser beam. And on the, it's, it's, uh, it's on a table clamp that opens to um, two and a half inches wide, I believe. And the gooseneck that the beam is on is 28 inches. So you can make that nice and tall for really big hoop and bring it down lower for smaller hoops. You can use it for hanging, you know, framework on the wall, um, whatever. It's really quite handy. It really is. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just wonderful. Uh, let's see. Dawn says, you know, it makes everything look high end when you add embroidery to your favorite clothes. It most certainly does. It most certainly does. Yep. Uh, let's see. And Rachel says, yep, no one's perfect. Boy, you're not kidding. And um, doing Facebook Live is a humbling experience, right, Rain? It is. <laughs> so many things happen. I remember one time I was doing one of my designs, and, of course, something happened. It ate the fabric and stuff, and I'm just kind of, oh, yeah, well, we'll move on now. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Risa Ranke, she says, uh, Monster Hoop's great for pot holders, for sure. Uh, so Sandra Cummings says, can you use the bottom of your magnet, ma magnetic hoop? Well, we don't suggest that you apply sticky stabilizer to the wrong side of your snap hoop monster, the bottom frame. You will, um, you know, adhesive will remain on the protective suede that's on that hoop and kind of ruin its ability to protect your machine bed. You can hoop sticky stabilizer in a snap hoop monster and then score and remove the protective paper from the interior of the frame that you most certainly can do but we have just found that people love the sticky hoop because it you know it's in its so in your sewing studio and that's its function and it's there and handy for you you know whenever you need it um what can you use when the green covering on the suede wears off? Well, it shouldn't wear off, um, but you can call the office and see about a replacement. Let's see. Uh, Rachel Price says, you miss my sister Marie and I at Be So In in Tulsa. Oh, and you're in Maine now. Oh, well, that's lovely. Good for you. That's beautiful up there. Yes, great store in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So you're not very savvy uh, on computers. Well, you know, our software, what's really cool about our software is there is in-app video to the software. The manual is embedded in it. When you purchase, you uh, have um, it, uh, the availability of taking a class, a private Zoom tutorial session with one of our um, outstanding educators. So, you know, there's lots of opportunity for learn. Um, can the sticky paper be used on other brands of hoop? Uh, if it fits, sure, if it fits. I mean, we sell the sticky stabilizer in rolls, but it, uh, we also sell them in pre-cut pieces specifically for different hoops. Okay, so let's see. After one embroidery design is finished, do you replace the entire piece of stabilizer to do the next? No, you don't. You can patch. Shall I show them how to patch? That's a little tricky, but I'll walk <laughs> through it. How about that? I'm not really set up to do it. But what we would do is I take, I place this hoop on a cutting mat, not a hoop mat, okay, on a cutting mat. And I literally, with my rotary cutter, cut out around it, right? If it was just these patches, I would just cut that out if it was those stitches. And then I take a small piece of sticky stabilizer, and we'll pretend that this is sticky stabilizer. I take a small piece of it and I patch it from the back, sticky side to the back. And you know, then I just finger press that down and make sure that the sticky on the back, that's the sticky side is sticking to the back of the sticky paper. Okay, so sticky, always the sticky is up, even on the patch, sticky side up, sticky side up here. Always patch from the back and make sure your patch is larger than your opening. At least, you know, be generous with that, okay? Because you're conserving stabilizer anyway, but be generous with that. Because if it separates during the embroidery process, it's very frustrating, very frustrating. 
let's see. Um, uh, so let's see. Amy Harris says, yes, POW, there was an original POW that was quite small and that had a gooseneck and it was really small. And then there was POW 2 and um, that was an accordion type of lamp. And now POW 3, the latest generation, they all do the same thing, is a gooseneck. Mm -hmm. So let's see. When you think of how far machine embroidery started uh, with 3D with Viking, I know it's absolutely amazing. Would a magnetic hoop without the top work with the yes, Amy? I just did, um, I just reviewed that whole you know best you know we never talk we never encourage anyone to put a sticky stabilizer on the back of a monster hoop bottom. You don't want to uh, apply an adhesive to those suede strips; it will ruin the suede. And I kind of went into detail, so you could in the rebroadcast you could rewind and see. Okay. Um, Okay, so let's see. I think we really hammered it out. I think we covered everything. Covered quite a bit. Right? And your designs, let's take a look at them. I mean, my goodness, are they beautiful or what? You know, and they're on special. Wait till everybody sees just how, uh, what a great special this is. Look, $39.99. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, for 200 designs. I know. Yes, yes, absolutely. It's and really it's hard. Cool. And it's an instant download. So if you like it, you can download it and be stitching now, literally now. Right, Reed? That's right. Be sure to post your um, photos, too, of your oh, projects. That. Yeah, you can post with the hashtag Dime Sew Along or Reen. You must have a hashtag. Is that Embroidery Garden? Yep, that works. Yeah, that's awesome. And so, yeah, we do have suggestions on how to get the rulers straight on the uh, magnetic frames, and that's on our blog. It's also when you purchase the hoop, it's uh, the instructions are included in there. So, uh, you know, easy to do. We have a crosshair that you download that you stitch on hoop stabilizer, and then you just use that as your centering marks, and you are in good shape. Uh, okay, so... Aretha Ranke says she loves the instant gratification, don't we all, right? And so how do you purchase? Well, um, the link is will be below in just a, a moment. And let's see, uh, Jacqueline X says she already got hers. Good deal. Yeah. All right. Will this work in other software? Yeah, so Catherine Barker, absolutely. You're, when you download it, you're going to have all the common embroidery formats that you enjoy or that you need for your embroidery machine. If you want to manipulate the designs, you know, resize them beyond 10%, then we encourage you to use in our embroidery tool shed software, the free software, or any of our paid programs and manipulate the C2S file that you'll find in the download. So the C2S file is the native um, format for all of our embroidery software here at Dime. And that's going to give you the ability to stretch and do as much as you want. But yes, all other brands uh, or all other formats of uh, embroidery are in there also. Yes. Uh-huh. And uh, okay, I think... I think that's it. Oh, well, no, it's on the house. Reen, there's always one more thing. There's always one more thing. Everybody's looking forward to on the house. I know. So, you know, as you know, every Thursday we give away a free design. And this week is a really adorable, charming, charming Valentine's Day design. And as you know, my good friend Deborah Jones runs this program. She handpicks these designs. And when you see that cute puppy, you know she handpicked it. She says, who wouldn't want this sweet pup to deliver a Valentine's card to them? So that little envelope that you see there is actually an applique. And if you have software, you could add a name. Isn't that adorable? So it is. I know it's so cute. He's adorable. On that stitch out, it looks like you, did you use um, glitter vinyl on that stitch out? did she used glitter vinyl isn't that fun it's adorable yes 
It is. And so some people are asking, did we take down all of 2022's designs? We did. They were up there all year, all of 52 weeks. And then just like many of us like to do, we clean house to welcome in the new year. So if you didn't take advantage of it, now you know, you can take advantage of it every week and grab them. 2023's will be up for the whole year. So we hope you take advantage of that. And next week, I'll be back and we're going to do the on the house project and we're going to be featuring embroidery foam, not this foam, not this foam, but puffy foam, you know, the kind that raises the stitches, not add structures to uh, structure to bag. So, oh my goodness, so many foams, but it'll be fun. We'll do that next week. Oh, Reen, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thanks for inviting me, Eileen. It's always a great time. It sure is. And, you know, our industry is just so grateful to have you in it. Your talents are beyond, you know, words, really. You've taught all of us so much. So thank you for that. Oh, thanks, Eileen. All right. You have a good week, everybody. Bye.